There is a new enemy out there. You'll need a new weapon for this war. I call them Sentinels. A lot of people in the different X-Men incarnations have wanted to use the Sentinels. It's such a huge part of X-Men lore. A Sentinel is an enormous robotic weapon that seeks out and destroys mutants. There have been so many robot movies. The difficulty of doing it is being original, because it has to feel very familiar to the fans that have read the comic. The thing that we have that I don't believe any other movie's ever done is shown two incarnations technologically of what a robot looks like in the past and what a robot could potentially look like in the future. Brian wanted to stay as true as we could to the Sentinels as we've known them through history. The first thing I did was I put together a book that showed what the Sentinel looked like in the first time you saw him and then each year. And in the comic form, they work beautifully, but a lot of them kind of look like 1950s wrestlers to us. The Sentinels began as a program in the early 70s. They were machines, they were armed, 70s technology. They had the ability to target the mutant gene and isolate mutants. Sentinels in 1973 are sort of bulky in the traditional idea of what a robot looks like. In the 70s, there were these beautiful, formed plastic shapes and wonderful colors. And since we wanted our Sentinels to be made completely out of plastic anyway, it seemed to be a really good way of showing the 70s. The Sentinels were purple in the original comics, and we wanted to very much stay with that. We finally came up with something that was really inspired by 70s product design. So it's all these beautiful vacuum-formed plastic shapes. It took a lot of uh, influence from both cars in the 1970s to those wonderful TV sets that were round with the smoke glass panels on them. It can fly as well. It's got the aeronautical capabilities of a Harrier jump jet was the idea so they could sort of hover and fly. You hear this big propulsion. And they say that they're not metallic, so you hear that their sounds are non-metal. The minigun that's on their arm is non-metal. And when they set down on the ground and you feel the weight of their feet, you feel it in your chest because we subbed them, they hit the subwoofer with them. The 1973 Sentinel was built in LA. Every joint is posable and movable. He's actually supported from a post that comes off the back. We can pose the legs, pose the arms, move its upper body. You can twist it around, pose the head in any direction. All the options and the things that it does, it's quite amazing for the, for the final product. That was an interesting design challenge to try and build something convincing that was 18 foot tall, made of plastic and that could fly in the 1970s. Having the 1970 Sentinel gives you a lot of spatial volume. When you have the crowd reacting, you can tell that they're looking at something physical. They're all, all, everyone's focused on the same thing. You're also getting all the reflections off of all the plastic. People can stand in front of it or behind it and walk around it. They can interact with it. Things that you couldn't do if you just had a, a green stick there kind of thing and telling people, imagine what's here. There's one scene where Beast jumps up and tries to disable a sentinel by ripping its wires out of its neck. We shoot it practically. We've got a stunt guy, full Beast makeup, jumping onto a giant green robot shape that's on a gimbal, thrusting back and forth, and he's being thrown off by wires. They were very primitive, relatively speaking. What Mystique offers in her DNA is that they can take her powers, take the essence of her power, and incorporate it into the Sentinels. Both sides want to find Mystique. One side wants to protect her DNA to save the mutants, and the other side wants to take her DNA to destroy the mutants. Her genes could hold the key to mutation itself. Imagine Sentinels that could transform, adapt to any target. Trask steals Mystique's genetic code, and he uses her genetics to basically make giant versions of her, of what she's capable of doing, because he sees her as this perfect species. And if he can somehow steal her abilities, the Sentinels will work. Brian was really specific about what he wanted the future Sentinels to do and how he wanted them to evolve and fight and be almost unbeatable. Here they come. The Sentinels of the future are an evolution from the Sentinels of the past. 
They have been imbued with biomechanical technology to transform and adapt to other mutants, to sort of take on their physicality, taking some of their powers and utilizing them against the mutant population. And there are thousands and thousands of them on the hunt for mutants at all times. The evolution in digital technologies and some really terrific artistry on the part of our animators and our designers brought us to what I think is a sort of groundbreaking visual design. The future Sentinels are very sleek and because they're based on Mystique's DNA, we wanted to give them aspects like Mystique, like almost feminine, in the sense that they're very poised and balanced and very elegant like Mystique herself, but also just keeping their face sort of angular and dark, they're actually scary. PC forged ahead with the Future Sentinel, taking the work from their art department into concept building the model and actually rigging every part of the CG Sentinel for its animation. They could sort of do sort of minor shape shifting to form sort of these sort of knives and sort of blades for stabbing or drilling and things like that. When the Sentinels first appear, their arms come through the wall and they're very specific in their body movements and they're very threatening. So we wanted to have something that sounded like you couldn't tell if it was electricity or fire or what the heck it was. <laughs> there was a lot of sound design that went on with Craig Berkey. The Sentinels in particular were actually sort of a smorgasbord of interesting sounds. The comment that we got from Brian was that he wanted them to sound like the scariest thing he's ever heard. I actually found some old riveted belts and then kind of used them together with shale rocks. And the shale rocks created this crackly sound with the riveting creating the ability to have the linear sound of click, 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 click. And together it really kind of created a cool sentinel. Run! Go! There are great opportunities for sound. And if you're creating a great story and helping tell that story, and enhance it in some way, that's where you want to be. Each of our Sentinels had tens of thousands of scales over their body, so each time the Sentinels encounter a mutant, they can somewhat mimic the power of that mutant. You'll see the Sentinel that grabs Colossus, for instance, his scales all lock down and he becomes much more silver in color, so he's actually become super strong and that allows him to defeat Colossus. Their weaponry really came from a build-up of power from within them that could open up its whole head and fire this huge energy blast. Also, the Sentinels can communicate these powers to each other. If one's having trouble with, say, Sunspot, the one that's fighting Bobby can communicate the ice power to that Sentinel that uses it to defeat Sunspot and vice versa. You'll see that the Sentinel encased in ice suddenly turns red hot after the one that's killed Sunspot has sent the power down to him. So there's also all this dealing with just making sure the power's all transferred so rather than adapting to exactly what they're fighting, they swap. Every time we come out of the box, we have to be different. I never want the audience to say, oh, you know, it's sort of like that last movie. I never, ever want that. So these Sentinels are the greatest foes they could ever have. You want movies like this to have spectacle and feel like the action and the visuals are as or more exciting than anything in the genre. That's part of the fun and the challenge of making these movies. The foundation is part science fiction, part X-Men. You want to swing for the fences. So the big visuals become the signature experiences of these films. One of the Sentinels to be really cool and special. They were a remarkable achievement, and I think that's exciting for audiences.